Hey everyone, my name is Emma. I got a new haircut. Randos don't recognize me anymore, which is great. Randos meaning people that I went to high school with that I don't want to talk to. Yes. So anyway, I also have dyed my hair. So today I wanted to talk about books that made me feel a little less lonely and I wanted to create a tag called the Little Less Lonely Tag. I have blue, blue, blue days. Winter is especially hard for me. As we know, winter is coming. I was thinking if George R.R. Martin got a royalty every time, like a royalty check of like $10 or like even like a $1 or even like a cent, every time someone made a Winter is Coming joke or mentioned it, he would be richer than God combined with every person in Silicon Valley. So anyway, winter is hard and winter is also just hard for a lot of people. It's hard for me in terms of just like my mood. I deal with a lot of other issues on the reg, so I personally love to read in the winter as much as I can and just read when I'm having a hard time. That can be difficult for some people because when you are depressed or when you, you know, whatever is going on in your life, sometimes you don't want to read because you don't have the energy. But um, this is about if you do find, you know, if you do get a little bit better and you do are able to read a little bit, you know what I mean? Or if you are just feeling, having a blue day or, or stressed out or whatever. And these are books for me personally that made me feel a little less lonely and made me feel like someone understood me and that's the power and beauty of books. So these aren't necessarily books that were influential because that's another tag that someone else made, but this is about books that made me feel a little less lonely. So I have some questions here. Let's just get started. So the first book is a classic that seemed to get you. So I have Emma by Jane Austen. I adore this book so much. It is funny and light, but very important, I think, especially in the time period. It's about Emma Woodhouse, who's rich and wealthy and smart and lovely, and how she um, learns to be a better person, basically. I've loved everything related to Emma, myself, Emma, since uh, I was a little girl. I, I love all the adaptations except for the Gwyneth Paltrow one. That's just, no, I'm talking talk about that. But Clueless, um, the one from 1995, Kate Beckinsale, the new one that was on the BBC. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And I finally got around to reading Emma a few years ago. It was just so great. And Emma Woodhouse is a character that I r identify with so much. She is a lot like how I was when I was a kid and still am. She's very meddlesome, very bossy, gets in people's business wants to control everything. I'm very, that's my bad side and my good side sometimes, but I'm very, very bossy. There's a story my mom tells about how when I was in kindergarten, I went on a field trip to the zoo and my group got lost and I asked my teacher, I went, can I please have the map? And she gave me the map and then I directed them out of there and I was very, very bossy. So Emma Woodhouse is someone that I really relate to and her her growth is something that I'm learning myself. I'm learning how to be a better person and learning how to be less selfish like everyone and how to listen and just be the best person I can be. So I love this book. Anyway, if I don't explain classic that seems to get you is just a classic book that seemed to get you. Like you really identified with the main character. I should have said that before. So the next book is a surprise, meaning a book that really surprised you and you didn't expect it to be so emotional or so important to you or whatever. So I'm choosing Just One Day by Gail Foreman. I do not have the book with me because my friend is borrowing it. But Just One Day, you probably know what it's about. A girl who goes to Paris for just one day and about the subsequent year afterwards. Um, the Just One Day part didn't really do much for me. But it was that subsequent year and her dealing with all the crap that happened because of that. And all of the, the aftermath of that was very powerful particular though I, there was a part in the book where the main character is sitting in a bathroom stall at her college her freshman year and she realizes how depressed she is and how unhappy she is and she just starts to cry and that was a, a huge deal for me because I read that book at my old university um I read it in January which like I said is my worst month in terms of happiness and I read it in bed on a Saturday and I remember sitting there and getting that part and just bawling my eyes out and my roommate asked me what was wrong and I wasn't really sure I didn't know why it affected me so much and I realized now that it was because I was so unhappy and because I wasn't doing what I wanted to do and because I felt like 
I was going to be stuck there. And that was a very important thing for me to read that, and it helped me, I think, in some way. So that book surprised me so much. It's one of my favorites for that reason, not for all the boy stuff, because I really don't like the guy character. He's really annoying. Okay, so book you read at just the right time. So don't hate me, but I'm very late to the Harry Potter screen, admitting that it's hard because I've lied about that many times of being like, yeah, I read Harry Potter. I've seen all the movies and I've listened to up to the sixth book on audiobook um, and I've read up to the fifth book. Um, this is for a couple reasons. One, because I kind of was a little bit younger and Harry Potter scared the crap out of me. Listening to the audiobooks on car trips or whatever freaked me out. The second movie came out when I was like seven or something or eight. I remember and I remember being in a theater in Florida and having my face like in my mother's lap because I was so scared of, of the of all of it the basilisk and the, the creepy walls and all of that so it took me a very long time to read Harry Potter um, I'm, and I also am a very slow reader of series I I like series but I just tend to take forever reading them I cannot speed read a series or marathon a series it just does not happen for me but anyway so the book that I read recent uh, the bu a book that I read at the right time, and I read it over the summer, was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Um, some people hate this book, I know that. But I read this book at a time that was particularly hard in my life over the summer, a very bad patch, where I was dealing with a lot of big issues and just a lot of crap, and this book meant a lot to me, and it means a lot to me. Harry's struggle felt very real to me, even though it was angsty or whatever, it just, like, what he was going through felt felt real and felt very much like what I was going through but specifically I love this book because of a scene between Luna and himself after Sirius has died and you probably know it and he's um he's looking at Luna and trying to figure out like what happened with Luna and why she can see the the horses I can I'm sorry I don't remember their names but the horses the dead horses and Luna explains about how her mother died and um you know and talks about how didn't you hear them beyond the veil and talks about how she'll see her mother again and um, I'm not going to get into religion or whatever, I'm not a very religious person, but that scene was so optimis optimistic, optimistic, optimistic and hopeful and wonderful that even if you're not religious, I find that to be just a really wonderful, hopeful thing and it's something that I really needed at the time. So um, the next is a book that inspires you and I have a couple and I will say that I'm currently reading Yes, Please by Amy Poehler, and that's gonna, that would be on this list if I'd finished it, but I haven't, but I love it, and it's so inspiring. But this is a book that inspires you when you're in going through a hard time, creatively, or personally, or prof professionally, or whatever. So I have Is Everyone Else Hanging Out With Me and Other, con and Other Concerns by Mindy Kaling. I love Mindy Kaling. I adore Mindy Kaling's face. I think she's the coolest. And this book um, was very important to me, and it's still very important to me. It inspired me to write. Um, I was writing before that, but it inspired me to keep writing. I was going to school at my other school for writing. I love, love, love to write. Um, and I really love to write about my life and um, write in a funny, weird way or fictionalize it or whatever and kind of like interpret it. So this book really inspired me. And also Mindy Kaling's like perspective on the world is very similar to mine in terms of like how she feels about like society and I just I don't know I adore her adore her and this book always inspires me another book that always inspires me is also Beauty Queens by Libba Bray through a nonfiction and a fiction if you want to do that you can um this book inspires me because of its feminist nature and because this book is en encompasses what feminism is which is inclusiveness um equality for not just women but for gay people for transgender people, for other ethnicities, for whatever, race, whatever, nationalities. It's about inclusiveness of all humans. And this book really deals with that beautifully. And it's also so funny and satirical and wonderful and so kick-ass. It makes you feel like, yeah, I'm a very kick-ass person. So yes, Libra Bray. This book, if you don't like young adult, read Beauty Queens. It's nothing like any other young adult I've ever read. Okay, so the last thing on my list is a book that calms you, a book that when you're, you know, very stressed out or in a very like difficult spot in your life that you can read and it can kind of just calm you down. And so I picked Time with Soft There, A Pair of Sojourn at Shakespeare and Company by Jeremy Mercer. 
This book is a nonfiction book, a nonfiction book, nonfiction book about um, a Canadian journalist who goes and stays at Shakespeare and Company in Paris. Um, this book is beautiful and lovely and wonderful and like spring and like fall and like gorgeousness and like everything wonderful. This book really calms me. It's very sweet. It's a very small story and it feels like a fiction, a fiction novel at times. It's a very small, beautiful story and one that really calms me down. It's like a very good bubble bath and a very, very good cup of hot chocolate. So, or coffee or well, decaf coffee or tea or something. I don't know. Anyway, so that is my a little less lonely tag. I want to tag Sarah Actually Reads, The Library at the Edge of the World, and Emily Jean. Uh, I also would en encourage anyone else who wants to make a video, or if you don't make videos, to write it below books, you know, that have made you feel less, a little less lonely and talk about why, because I think it's important to spread the love and to really, you know, give those recommendations so if someone is going through a hard time themselves, maybe they'll pick that book up and that'll also make them feel better. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!